Hey there, it's Drutter, and it's the 2nd of September 2013, and it's my second video of the day. I did a big long one, uh, about 19 minutes long, about an hour ago, but uh, this one I wanted to split off because it's a little bit different topic. And I'm going to talk about Fukushima a little bit, and I'm going to talk about Syria a little bit, but the common denominator between the two is really mainstream media incompetence. And I know that's already been proven many times. Not only are they incompetent, they are corrupt and purposely lying to the people. But uh, just going to talk about Fukushima a little bit here first. And uh, it doesn't get much more mainstream than CNN. And uh, this article says that there's been a sharp spike in radiation levels measured in the pipes and containers holding water at the crippled Fukushima nuclear plant in Japan. And this is the first time that CNN has talked about Fukushima in absolute months. And the disaster has been getting worse and worse and worse there and is affecting pretty much everybody in the world, um, indirectly or directly. And I think it's a very important topic and it's being ignored for a reason. Now this is the first time they bothered to mention it, but look at the second sentence in this article. But the company in charge of cleaning it up says that only a single drop of the highly contaminated water escaped the holding tanks. A single drop. This tells the person that's reading it, okay, I don't really need to continue reading. Only one drop has leaked. And if you want to go and continue reading, um, you can. I'll put the link below, of course. But the point here is that they're telling people that only one drop of contaminated water leaked. In reality, it's more like 400 trillion gallons or something like that of highly contaminated water has flowed from the disaster site into the Pacific Ocean and uh, has contaminated most of the Northern Hemisphere. They don't bother to say that here. They just mention that there was one drop. You know, why would you make a news report if only one drop of water spilled? What, what's the point? What do you need to tell people about one drop for? It's not like that one drop can do much. My other question here is, where did that one drop come from before it was in those storage tanks? That's right. It was taken from the ground around the plant. So this is water that's contaminated, that's just out in, out in nowhere. And then it was put into these tanks. And one drop out of, I don't know how many tanks they have, thousands. And these tanks are incredibly big. I don't know how much water they're storing there, but it's you know, something the size of the Mediterranean Sea or something now. It's it's a lot of water. It's a, like a percentage of the world's water or something is, is in these tanks. One drop fell out and they make a news story about it. But that drop came from water in the ground in the first place. We will find out the cause of the issue and make proper countermeasures immediately and continue to make every effort to secure safety of workers, said TEPCO. TEPCO is a power company. We have BC Hydro here in British Columbia. Uh, other provinces and states have power companies as well. TEPCO happens to be just another power company. They're not a nuclear waste cleanup company. They have no experience with this. There's no way that they should be in charge of this. This is a disaster that is affecting everyone on the planet. And it's just absolutely ridiculous that they're still in charge. Not only are they in charge, but no one else is allowed to help. No one else is allowed to know what's going on. They control all the information. And they have been lying repeatedly the entire way through. Now about Syria. There's a lot of opinion out there. There's a lot of facts and info and misinfo and disinfo and whatever else you want to call it out there about it. But I'll draw your attention to this article, which says that uh, from May, a few months ago, a UN official says there are strong suspicions that Syrian rebel forces have used chemical weapons, i.e. sarin gas, in the country's civil war. So UN did an investigation a few months ago and found that it was not the government of Syria that was using chemical weapons, it was the US-backed rebels. I think that's exactly what happened two weeks ago, except on a bigger scale this time. And the US has wanted to go into that country and destroy the government and put in their own puppet for decades. So they're giving themselves a reason to do so. Now, not in regards to this article, but in regards to this topic, I have something else I want to say. The debate that's raging right now, at least in the U.S. mainstream media, is were chemical weapons used in Syria recently? And they have a U.N. team going in there, 
and the UN team is now going to take, I don't know, a week or something to examine the samples that they took. And all they're going to determine with this test is whether or not chemical weapons were used. The test won't say who used them. This is ridiculous. The question isn't whether or not chemical weapons were used. We know they were used. No one's denying they were used. There is no side denying that this was used. There's no faction denying that chemical weapons were used, except for the Americans. And yet they're the ones that want to launch a war against this country. So they're waiting on this result that will tell them whether or not chemical weapons were used. And if they were used, apparently that's going to be justification to launch a war similar to Iraq, perhaps, similar to Afghanistan, perhaps, similar to Libya, perhaps. How many people have to die so the USA can put a different leader in charge of that country? The question here is who used the chemical weapons, because we know that they were used. And in fact, does that even matter? Does it even matter who used the chemical weapons? Should the USA be bombing Syria because people in Syria were killing people in Syria? What makes the United States, or Saudi Arabia, Canada, France, and other countries that are encouraging the U.S. to attack, the policemen of the world? Fuck you, mainstream media. Your days are numbered.